That's right. Where'd you find it? Oh, locally. In, yeah. Uh, there's a crystal shop in Agnes. Um, they have very interesting experiences, and the reason they created the crystal shop was because they were both experiences. Wow. And they wanted to bring in that energy via the crystals. Far yeah. out. Yeah. Here, let me... Uh... It's going to take a couple of minutes. It's just hitting now. Let's uh, let me. I'm going to tag you. I'll tag you on it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Edit. Mary Rodwell. OG. Original goddess. I, lo I love your story. Everybody loves your story. You're coming out in the 90s. <laughs> I can't even imagine coming out in the 90s. That's crazy. But it's been a long time. It's been too long. <clears throat> I can't remember when, actually. It's several months, isn't it, now? I'm going to say probably October, November. Uh, or, no, I'm sorry, uh, September, October. Uh, I know we got together after Soulogy Fest. And uh, speaking of that, I mean, God, something, something majorly shifted, I think, around October. And it's just been... You know, it's just been like really fast paced since then. Uh, we've had a lot of good shows. We had some young people, you know, we've had some young people uh, come on, you know, which is kind of up one of, up one of your alleys. Um, yeah, but especially this, this whatever we just went through, this gateway. <laughs> 22, all these twos and wow, that's been, uh, that's been quite amazing. Uh, I think people are starting to integrate it now. I know I spent, uh, I think the last two nights, 10, 12 hours straight sleep, just straight lucid dreams, straight, you know, and having uh, some pretty good um, communions, uh, one with Morgan, two by myself, one last night that was amazing. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, let's see how much time we got into this. We're two minutes in. Okay, so we're going to officially start. We got Mary Rodwell in the house it's been too long. I was getting used to seeing her every couple of months, and I don't know what happened. We just, but everything's perfect. Uh, so what's going on, Mary? How you doing? What's happening? Well, like yourself, there's been a huge amount happening, and quite oddly, you were talking about the dreams, and I've been having dreams within dreams where literally I've had a dream which has had interesting symbology, and in the dream, I'm viewing the dream and being told how to interpret it which is the first time that's ever happened wow. where I was dreaming um of the dream that i had and yes. then actually interpreting it as well, i was in the dream itself in the dream yeah yeah i've had that happen to me and, and it comes it's my voice you know it's in it's actually my voice and it'll say this means this or this means that or it'll say you're in a lucid dream you know, or watch that, what she just said to you or he just said to you. Yeah, the lucid dreams have really picked up for me in the last few months. But, yeah, it's a... What was interesting this morning, I woke up with this in my head, that, Mary, it's the unified field of consciousness that we are connecting to. Mm -hmm. um, as I woke up, that was what was in my head, the unified field of consciousness. So that was obviously really significant with what we've just discovered with you know the two all the twos and what yeah. something yeah. significant so there you are but lots has been going on um and one of the things that there are two things that you you know your listeners may be interested in one of them is very controversial when isn't it um <laughs> we we expect that with you we hey this is the controversial crowd right here so you don't have to worry about that right well i'll go into that in a minute but what i've been discovering with a lot of the regressions that i've been doing recently is the connection of a past life to present life and they've come in to finish or complete something that wasn't completed previously and I've actually got, done a whole presentation around the links to the past life. And one recent one that I've done, which is actually quite fascinating, is a woman who, who um, had remembers being up on the craft, remembers going with a gentleman who she knew very well, 
who basically said to her on you know on the way to the car, you know, this is this is bloody fantastic, isn't it? He was actually I remember him saying that and he was saying, she goes up on the craft seeing others who are her close friends on the craft. She's seeing the procedure. She's seeing what they're showing her and all the rest of it. What's fascinating is that she wanted to know more because she said, Mary, they're talking about a message that they gave me and I can't remember it. So can I want to find out what that message is? And so when we did the regression, we discovered that all those on the craft that remembered even the next day they'd had this strange dream where they'd been on a spacecraft, didn't realizing it was real. Um, what she discovered is all that group that she saw on the craft who were her friends were actually present in Atlantis. And what had happened in Atlantis was they hadn't been able to stop the disaster in Atlantis. They weren't actually able to stop it. And so they've come this time and look at the parallels that we've got with all the technology. It was the same thing. They over, um, they abused the technology. So Atlantis went down. They've right. come back now. At what time? When we are having this war between technology and spirituality. Mm. Exactly the same scenario. And she's come in this time. But what was interesting was the message. That, so not only did she see this connection to Egypt, sorry, to Atlantis, that they've all come back to. And I'll, I'll tell you two other stories that are connected to that. Um, I will actually read to you what she was told. Um, I'll just highlight, highlight that so everyone can hear it. In the past life in Atlantis, we failed. This is the message she was told. Um, uh, in, in, and in regression, she remembered it. They call themselves the teachers and also some are from the Arcturian Council. We are your parents, you are our children. To evolve is to choose correctly the love frequency above fear and greed, open hearts and unity, as the darkness will try and divide. We need to wake people up, show them they have a choice to serve the greater good, not fear and ignorance. Namaste, Earth will be part of the galactic community no longer in fear, which is the illusion to rise above it and see the lie. Service to others and lead by example. Time is short. Evolve and choose correctly. No earth is bright and you have a place in the galactic future. She was a bringer of light. She says there's more to that story in the presentation, but I wanted to. This is the message that she couldn't remember, that she remembered only in regression. Wow. And other stories, there's, there's two other stories that are fascinating, and one is involving the Sasquatch. Um, and this is fascinating because I've not gone into the Sasquatch before. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, so this is uh, another one. A lovely gentleman who has his own show contacted me about his connection to the Sasquatch and the clan leader he calls Ari. He says they are star beings. They are interdimensional. Um, they have the same message as the um, other star beings that we, you know, the Arcturians and all the rest of it. He said they, it, it's all about love, connection, um, compassion, healing, exactly the same message. He communicates with them by energy and by stick language. And I've got a whole lovely um, images, some brilliant images of how they leave the messages to him. But he was told by others that he had a link to the Sasquatch. So I did a past life regression with him and he has, he's, he's had three past lives of Sasquatch. Wow. So again, the links to the soul journey and the past life. And this is what's coming up more and more now is the links, the constant links. Yes. The two. And um, people remembering now why they've reincarnated and, and complete the mission. It's all about completing the mission and the parallels. And the other one I'm going to mention before I get into the con controversial one um, is about a young man. Oh, you, these aren't controversial, are they? These ones no. are just the norm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just the norm. Um, and the other one I'm mentioning, uh, what shall stretch people a little bit, is a young man who actually in my book, chapter 12 is a young man who's an artist, actually a really, really talented artist who um, 
felt he was being supported by Leonardo da Vinci and his artwork, um, who was helping him do the normal stuff because he does a lot of what we call, you know, the, the, um, uh, the more of the sexual art, if you like. Right. Anyway, when he was a child, he, he kept finding soldiers coming into his bedroom, souls lost from the First World War. And he was helping them um, until it scared him. He was a child, but he was helping them, you know, do rescues, basically. Mm. Works spiritually knows what I mean by rescue. Souls that are attracted in the astral. And he didn't know why it was always soldiers. And he found in his bloodline, a uh, hundred years previously, uh, the the soldier that died that belonged to the family, he had the identical date to his birthday, exactly identical to this um, soldier. And he wanted to know how that was connected to him because he kept doing these, seeing these soldiers and what have you. And we, of course, discovered it was him and he'd incarnate to do the art, which was going to activate consciousness, but um, unfortunately got dragged into the First World War and wasn't able to fulfill his mission. So he's reincarnated this time to actually create the artwork, which he said activates perception because he said he's from another dimension. So his artwork literally triggers consciousness. But he'd failed the last time simply because he'd been dragged into the First World War and was killed. Wow. So again, the same, the same link from this other, what we call past lives, has been drawn through into this life. For his mission and his purpose. Yes. So there's sort of three very interesting links, and there's more, but I'm going to get into the controversial one now. Um, <laughs> just to fill you in, um, about six weeks ago, a lady from uh, the UK contacted me. She's a healer. She works um, as an energy healer. Uh, has been working with spirits all her life. Mm. Uh, taps into source but she had this really frightening thing happen for her in, at least initially and why she wrote to me she didn't really know about ets she said it had never been in her framework um so this freaked her out and she said i was asked to help a woman who'd had that particular drug we all know about that right get right um, and this woman was really, really sick after it. So she was asked to heal this. Um, and she said she tried to go in and do her usual energy work. And she was initially blocked. And then she tried again. And she saw this black ball in the abdomen with things sticking out of it. But she couldn't shift it. So wow. the next thing, she's calling on Source to help her. And this E.T., moves in she's never seen one before had nothing to do with them as far as she knew coming in picked her up and this woman took them on the craft and the beings worked on the woman who'd had the drug wow and then put them both back three days later the woman's eating normally and is quite um as is recovering but this woman now is seeing all these ets and she said, and I'm freaked out because I've never had anything to do with ETs. Now they're in my space, you know, I'm seeing them all over the place and all the rest of it. So can you help me deal with that? Yeah. <laughs> but, but how do you know anything else like, like that? And I, within a week, you know how it works synchronously, within a week, a lady from Melbourne who's a businesswoman who had to have the drug um, actually said to me after it, a few days later, at night, these three beings come into her room. She's never seen them before. She sees them in at their hands in her body. And they're, and I said, so what do you think they were doing? She said, oh, they, they were healing me. Yeah. So there's two cases of ETs intervening after this particular drug. Now, I'm not saying any more than that. People can <clears throat> I don't think that's controversial at all. I mean, it, it, you know, all these four stories, they say a lot. I mean, the, the one thing, and we've talked about this for years, but it's actually happening. 
I mean, happening on a much wider scale. And then you, you, in your examples, you've got people that uh, in one case or has been working with Spirit for years and years and years. In another case, it's a businesswoman who has three ETs pop in the room. Um, but, you know, one thing is the past memories. Atlantis has been huge. I mean, we know this. I mean, it's been huge. It's been absolutely huge. I did some research uh, just recently, and in doing the research, and, and I don't even know why I was led that way, but you know how these things work. <clears throat> I I saw how much exposure Atlantis was given in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and then after World War II, it just got smashed with everything else. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Like, some, there, there's got to be a reason behind it. But again, Atlantis, Sasquatch, previous lives, uh, the continuation of things that were not completed, um, you know, that's a big one. <clears throat> the ET involvement is a big one, especially for people that haven't had it. Uh, I know the experiences for me personally have, like everybody, have been expanding. I have not had anything visual. I have tapped in to certain situations I've had. But the reason that I went looking was because I literally felt 10 or 12, I call them soul family, <clears throat> They had a galactic, uh, you know, a galactic feel, but I could feel their hands, particularly in my head uh, and in my lower, like I would say, like between my sacral and root. And I just knew it. And I thought, well, I'm going to try to tap into this and see what I can get and so on and so on. But but yeah, this this is uh, uh, to me, it's exciting. It's really exciting uh, now, especially after we just went through this 22 to 2022 thing. Uh, because I feel like, you know, for myself and what I'm observing, there's a lot of integration going on. It's a different type of integration to me because there's a lot of stuff coming up like never before. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening to the body like never before. And for me, it's just a good time to be quiet, be alone, and just let whatever's happening happen. And try not to think about it too much. Don't take anything personal. Don't get caught up in the BS in the programming. And, and you know, it's it's a mixed bag, no doubt. But uh, I just uh, uh, I, I'm respecting it because I feel it. I feel like a huge change. How do do you, do you feel like we've stepped across a giant threshold this time? Oh, I, I've been feeling the lead up to it as well. Mm. Um, there's, there's been all this um, activation going on. I've never had, you know, so much interaction with people and um, so many coming now. And not so much with the hypnosis I've discovered, although that's still very important. They're still wanting to know their mission, what happened if there's missing time, all those usual things that I will work with but many are wanting to connect to their multidimensional awareness mm. that are being activated, but not everyone knows just how to put it together and work with it with confidence. So, you know, I've been giving them an operating model, if you like, to just sh to remind them, because we all can do this, how it works so they can have confidence in it and mm. use it. And that's been even more important, it seems now, than because they can still access hidden memories, all that kind of thing, but they just do it more consciously right. rather than going to an altered state and connect to whoever the team is, you know, and get to know who's working with them and have confidence in their information and, and how they're helping them and who it is, why they're with them, what do they offer, all these kinds of things that help you connect to that source with more confidence and to trust it because that's the big one because many say, well, I get this, this and this, how can I trust it? So how do you validate the information that is coming from a source that has integrity? Um, and are they who they say they are? All those kinds of questions come up. So my my um, way of working is to help them consolidate that into a package that gives them whatever. And that's been far more important, it seems, in recent times than even going into an altered state simply because it empowers them. Right. You know, they don't one after that. Once they know how to do it themselves, they don't need a facilitator because they are their own facilitator. Do you, do you feel that the, um, 
the questions arising from people that are having these experiences are coming from a place of, um, I don't know, suspicion, paranoia, um, just lack of experience, and also is in general, in speaking in general, uh, is, is part of your process that you uh, present to them. Uh, is it based on how it makes you feel when it's happening? Um, there, it, well, everything that we experience, whether, you know, how, however that interaction is, we are relying on what we feel from that, whether right. or not it's an energetic transfer or whether it's verbal or whatever. We know what feels right. We know that we can tap into the integrity of truth. This is what we're being, I believe, being tasked to do right now, is with all the disinformation that's out there, the layers of truth, the edited truth and what have you, what do you have that enables you to tap into the highest truth? First of all, that has to be your intent. Right. Right. The highest level of spiritual truth is the frequency that you're putting out. And that is then what will be reflected back to you. But if you're looking at information that's going to help your ego or it's related to a fear, then you will get that reflected back to you. Mm. Really about your intent. And when you connect to your team, it's always saying, I only want to connect to the highest forces of love, compassion, truth, knowledge, whatever. That's all. All we have to do is, is rely on the highest intent to pull back the information from the matrix, from this mm. unified field of consciousness that I was told about this morning. Right. Um, so with that, then, when you have that, you can look at the information and feel and sense and know what has integrity and what doesn't have integrity whether or not it's in the conscious 3D world or whether or not it's in your multidimensional reality, yeah. that's what you're connecting to. You, you know, it's, it's like electrical cord. You can't plug into something that's a different frequency. Right. It's possible. Once well, that, have- yeah, no, that's interesting what you're saying too because I, you know, obviously have interacted with a lot of people just even on the show and... It's amazing the different types of um, expressions that come out, be they verbal or not. Uh, And it's interesting, too, to me what you're saying, because obviously our experience is uh, influenced by our fears and by our ego uh, to to greater and lesser, uh, lesser extents. But also to recognize, like through what you're saying, that they play a role, uh, and again, could be lesser or greater, in our uh, communion, communications, and transmissions, uh, which I think is really important because um, if I go into the field thinking I'm impervious to the human condition, I might be missing something. Uh, and, and And I really like the way that you kind of give it its due because... Um, if you don't acknowledge something, as we know, doesn't mean it goes away, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yeah. For me, it, it, it's always been about, the, you know, and I simplify everything, um, Todd, because it's the nature of me. Right. Um, make, it simple, make it simple. And there are three layers of frequency that I identify whenever I'm connecting to information, whether it's physically 3D information um, or multi-dimensional information. Is is it coming from a fear frequency, an ego frequency, or a genuine higher frequency of truth that you are seeking for your your conscious, your super conscious and your higher self? That is the frequency I'm saying. That's where I want to connect to whatever intelligence is in that frequency and i won't accept anything less than that <clears throat> yeah so so you run it through is this my ego is this my fear is this the truth those yeah. are the three okay very cool very cool eft 
<laughs> That'll be easy to remember. That'll be an easy acronym. Um, yeah. The, the involvement of the aspects as facilitators that we might call galactic or that we could call galactic really, and we've talked about this, and obviously this is your one of your fortes uh, since the 90s, uh, but it definitely is, is coming on stronger and stronger. And, and like hearing stories like yours, the ones you just talked about, I wonder, with the, with the faint memory or the faint feeling that I have with, that I told you about my own experience in the last few days, uh, I just wonder how so much we must not be privy to for one reason or another because of a blocked memory or, or whatever that is, memory swipe or whatever that is. Th these these uh, visitations or this facilitation of these uh, by these facilitators must be... Uh, compounding rapidly uh, I just feel like it you know frequency wise consciousness wise the things that we're seeing that are uh, you know coming out as a representation of, of, of things such as that such as this this convoy in Canada and in this massive uh, demonstration or peaceful protest in Canberra and the pressure that that pure intent must be having as a result of our collaboration with our other aspects, uh, I would think that we're going to start seeing very quickly things crumbling that uh, haven't uh, had the power over us that we might have thought. I think that's what has been so wonderful in this world of chaos and for many fear and darkness that, you know, many have struggled with. And I can't imagine for many people how, challenging on multiple levels that's been but you know we're very humanity and humans generally until their backs against the wall will not make any changes we're inclined to say no next week next year next right. month you know when i'm 50 or when i'm 70 or whenever it is we're very good at, at going into a denial or um looking at that saying in the future we're being forced, our backs against the wall, and that's what is being the most useful because it's making people now reassess everything that matters in their lives. Yeah. You know, when you're not allowed to see your family, when you wear this nappy on your face and isolation and you're told you can't do this and you can't do that, um, ultimately people start to reappraise their lives because many of, you know, they've been taken off the treadmill because they've not been allowed to work. So they're thinking now what really matters in my life i've not had a chance to really look at that before you know my family matters my love and, and care for them my you know their future matters mm. all these things get highlighted and that's been the positive thing is it is waking people up to see what isn't right and that's been brilliant because now we're seeing everything crumbling you know everywhere we look it's not right you know right <laughs> You know, everything you look at is that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. And you can see this house of cards. Yes. Humbling as people get the message. And we know that it's seeing and believing on this planet. You know, you have to see it. No good somebody telling you until it affects you or you lose someone or something happens that really affects you. Then all of a sudden it's hold on a minute. This is no longer out there. This is right here. Yeah. Right? And that is, you know, what has been so powerful. And my sense is that whoever's been orchestrating this, and goodness knows the levels of that, is I think they've overcooked it. Yeah. Time. Yeah. And, and, and the uh, crazy thing and good thing is that they're all so interlinked. Like, you know, the media... The, the pharmaceutical, I mean, and, you know, all the things that are pushing the narrative or whatever. I just know when one goes, they're all going to go. It's just going to be like a domino effect because because you can't, the, because they're all part of the same thing, you know, and it's just, you can't, uh, you know how, um, uh, like the, uh, the mafia, 
you know, how its evolution and, and, you know, it was a very, uh, I guess like a blood oath. Um, and I'm just using this as an example. Um, and there was always this, you know, you had guys going to prison for 20 years, 30 years, wouldn't open their mouth. And then everything changed, like maybe around the time of John Gotti or something like that, where they all just turned on each other. Even uh, what they call the capos, the bosses, and, and uh, the, 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 you know, the, the other uh, authorities in the field, like the capos, the captains. And, and, but yeah, I just see it like that. I'm just waiting. Like I know something's going to turn. Somebody's going to turn a rock over. Too many people are going to see it. It won't be able to be suppressed. And, uh, and it's just going to start falling, you know, like dominoes. Yeah. And I think the great thing that's happening now more and more is people are seeing the anti-science of, you know, what we are seeing is this medical procedure for something that they mm. can't even prove. For example, all of that is, is now gathering momentum as thousands of doctors and nurses are, uh, really highlighting what isn't right and what hasn't been right and yeah. that's just one level but we all know it's not not about that it's right. about where it's leading and that's the big one is the way it's leading to control and you know the bigger control and the, the loss of our total freedom at the end of it all that of yeah. course is the end goal it's not even about the money. Some say, "Well, follow the money." Yeah, the money is an is an issue, um, and highlights the corruption. But at the end of the day, that's that I believe is just a small part of what really ultimately um, this is all about, and that is about us all finally being put into our kennels and only allowed yeah. out. Exactly, exactly. A controlled siphoning of our energy, as opposed to a mass you know, trying to control it from a, a, a more, and you know, the other thing is too, is, you know, although there's been incidents of, let's just say, jackboot <laughs> behavior, you know, that one that just made the rounds in the last few days from um, Ottawa, the lady that was in the uh, disability scooter, that got trampled by a horse, and then they release a press release that says that a protester threw a bike at him, and that's what that was. Uh, what I'm trying to say is one thing I've noticed, because if, because if you go back two years ago, or even if you go back to when the bubble burst in 2008 and you had the uh, anti-Wall Street demonstrations, they got massacred. I mean, these people were just driven out overnight. There was no gathering. But I'm seeing less and less force because, like you said, I think it's been overcooked. I mean, if you have a... Uh, uh, a jab that's that's described two years ago or whatever it was a year and a half ago that you will not catch it again you will not be contagious that was that went to hell in a handbasket overnight and and you know and so like like you said they'll make one statement or one uh, suggestion and and then they'll have to about face and act like the first one was never even spoke about so they're running out or, you know, our brothers, sister souls that are playing that role are running out of options here. And what I don't see him doing is something very flagrant, very blatant, such as a, such as a, some, some of the things you might have seen in the 60s, for instance. I don't think that's going to work because the minute something like that happens, I think to your point, people are going, that was over there. Now it's here. And that whole ambivalence towards or apathy towards, uh, you know, doing something for somebody else that lives on the other side of the world is going to is going away because because it has it is hitting home everywhere. What a gift. Well, what I also think, even though we, we know, you know, the the Internet, I think they felt was going to be under their control and that we would all comply with the propaganda and all the rest of it what they didn't realize was even though they get a, a fair bit of control with it we also can communicate with each other across the world yeah. so even if it's rubbish or if we don't like it we can now find other means through the net to actually gather people together whereas that wasn't 
available in the 60s and 17s. We didn't have that kind of communication going, you know, the telephone and was, a, was about it, you know. Um, so it's worked against them again because every time they put a block on something, there's, in, you know, human ingenuity is creating another platform, another way. So all it does is create more ingenuity in the, in the, the person to create the information network that they need. So they didn't have that in the 60s and 70s. But now we can reach somebody and pull them together if they're in Hungary or Poland or Africa or mm -hmm. Alaska. And so people are supporting each other across the globe, not just in the same country. And that is empowering yeah. everyone to say, oh, it's worked over there. Great. Well, we're going to give this a go now. And what do you do about that? There is nothing you can do. You can, mm. you, know, you can say what you like. And interestingly, in mainstream media in Australia now, for the first time, they're actually acknowledging that something about the jabs that isn't quite okay. Is they're that right? They're acknowledging that there's been damage done. Not in a, not in a big way yet. Right. But, and the one thing that I think it was Sky News came up with less than a week ago. Um, this guy, I've forgotten his name now, um, on uh, Sky News, went through all the statistics of the ones that actually died of COVID against those that died with it and other more, uh, or more other comorbidities. Do you know how many it was? 83. 83? 83 that actually died of COVID. Not the ones that died with it, with wow. COVID. 83. And this is on mainstream Sky News less than a week ago. I wow. forgot doing this. But he pointed it out. He went to all the stats, went to all of it, and said that the total actually died with it, that actually died from it, should I say, was right. 83. Okay? Wow. That's, so, uh, yeah. That's like, that's like the tip of the iceberg. I, I queried uh, a few days ago, U.S. government official COVID fatality, something like that. I'd have to look at my history, but something like that. And I went to several different places. They all said the same thing, which was basically 900,000 people. Now, this is probably not vetted like this guy vetted, right, uh, on Sky News, but and, and even it hadn't been 900,000 people in two years. Now there's 250 million people here. So we're talking about, you know, I'm not saying it's not serious, I'm not whatever, but it's not what has been presented. And to your point, and I hadn't heard this, uh, it would make sense that at least some of uh, those that are in the position to do it would start to ease into the truth that's coming because it's coming like there's no way to hold this back and, and again it's the tip of the iceberg so that's that's exciting and that's encouraging well it does mean that finally mainstream news for whatever reason is now starting to acknowledge that all this that we've been presented with over the last 18 months to two years um is, has been so exaggerated that now they're realizing that if they don't can't start coming out with a bit of the truth, they're going to be hung, drawn and quartered by the, by the populace because they're saying, you have been the orchestrator of terrifying people. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying them. You know, there'll still be people now, and I've heard it across the globe, that, you know, even though they're told that, you know, masks aren't necessary now and social distance not necessary and all the rest, but are still doing it. Yeah. They're afraid to go out because they're, they're terrified that this virus is going to grab them and get them simply by going out their front door. The damage to the psyche, not just of older, particularly older generations that, you know, are fearful for their health anyway, because they may have other issues and thinking, oh, you know, I've always, you know, I've got a problem now with my heart or my lungs or whatever. I can't risk this. Um, and this is, this is the damage. And that is huge, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. and there is yeah. going to be consequences there is going to absolutely be consequences there has to be yeah there has to be and so it's just it's just a matter of like who's going to take the fall 
How many of us are going to claim ignorance and who are we going to throw under the bus? And I think that's where you're going to start to see the, you know, the, 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 you know, the ratting out and the turning. I mean, I was amazed watching this Bill Gates uh, clip that's uh, an interview that's making the rounds uh, just from the last five days ago or so. And he says, he's basically saying that we didn't work fast enough. We didn't get the, 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 uh, the uh, vaccine out fast enough. But in the process of what he was saying, he said that Omicron had worked better as a, as a vaccine than the vaccines because this came out of his mouth. And he said that older people, elderly, uh, o- overweight people, uh, diabetics, you know, people that are in the group of, say, high risk, uh, that they actually had developed a natural immunity through Omicron <laughs> that put him in the clear. And I thought, did he just say that? Did he just actually said, realize what he said? Uh, which... You know, to me, and I was talking to Morgan about it, I thought, I wonder if, like, the way the universe works is, here's this this thing put out with, a, with let's just say, a certain intention, and that the opposite thing occurs, such as in the example I just gave you that he, that he said, and that it's actually assisting us and complementing us in terms of coming from the carbon base to the light body, right? I mean, the thing is, more and more of the stories are coming out of those harmed. And some very, you know, one of them was uh, of a child of 13 in New Zealand, in Auckland. The parents um, had a 13, I think uh, it was a 13-year-old daughter had the jab and died from it. And they were offered $200,000 from the government to not admit that it was due to the jab. Um, there's another story in Rockhampton. Oh, wow. North of me, a gentleman comes out and says his wife died of, I don't know whether it was a heart condition or cancer, and they, he was offered nine grand Aussie dollars to say it was COVID. Um, and he said, and I refused. He said, I wasn't going to ag- agree to that. I've had others that have told me um, one, two stories. One of them was a, somebody who went to have the test got so fed up waiting for the test because it was a long queue, went home and two days later got a note to saying they were positive for COVID. They never even had the oh test. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I, and that's what I mean, the extent of the... Uh, I've always wondered, you know, my, step, my stepdad was in the CIA for 25 years and he had a very high level. I mean, like colonel level. He was very high. He was stationed in Vietnam for 10 of those years and... and and it reported directly to the director of the CIA. It was in the Oval Office and stuff. And he didn't say a lot of stuff. And I was a teenager, uh, you know, but I asked a lot of questions, as you might think. And uh, I always went like, how in the hell can there this be this type of, let's just say, covert infrastructure? And I understand compartmentalization, but how can it, it just doesn't seem at some point, it, you know, like you said, they overcooked it. At some point, that pot's going to bubble over. There's just, I don't see how you could contain it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it. you know, the red flags for me, because I was a nurse and a midwife, I looked into this from a medical point of view. Mm. And I, I soon dismissed every protocol as not being valid. Um, but the one thing that highlighted it to me, and it was very personal, very, at the very beginning that this all started, I heard about hydroxychloroquine as a prophylactic quinine. And I thought, right, I'll go to the pharmacy and I'll get some because it's quinine. It's been out 70 years, 70, 80, 90 years for for malaria. It's a very safe drug. I went to the pharmacy. They said, oh, no, you now need a prescription. So I said, really? So I said, "Okay." I wrote to my GP and I said, could I have a prescription for hydroxychloroquine? He wrote me this long letter back saying how dangerous it was. It was untested and I shouldn't even think about it and all the rest. Of it and don't even suggest it to your family, etc., etc. Well, I was pretty pissed off because I knew that that was rubbish. But you know what was interesting in Queensland that very week that I requested that hydroxychloroquine, there was a new law brought out that doctors who prescribed hydroxychloroquine would have six months in prison or sixty thousand dollar fine. The very week 
I wrote for that. Wow. Now, that was my introduction to the crap, really, was the start. This is the, there's something going on here. That was my red flag for me, was when I saw that. And I thought, now there's something really suspicious <laughs> around all this and now of course you know ivermectin they're saying you know the horse thing um, about ivermectin now of course they're putting it into a new medication that has ivermectin in it call it a different name and they're now promoting it yeah and probably it. with it probably with like a 400 percent markup <laughs> as well yeah the the, the the dam's going to break. It's like the little boy with his finger in the dike. I mean, it's it's going to break. There's no doubt. I, You know, as long as we've gone this deep, <laughs> we've only had a couple of shows removed. I mean, I'm not worried about it. I have noticed that there's been less censorship, um, uh, you know, in re, in respect or into contrast to how it was when they first came out. Because you could tell when it first was all rolled out, everything came out hardcore, right? And uh, But um, in terms of like, and I know we're all not built the same. I mean, uh, and I, some of this I've picked up from you because, you know, or, or it validated what I thought, which is we are a universally seated planet. There's so many different uh, representations of the universe here in physical form. Uh, you know, the DNA is alike, but at the same time, there's certain things that we bring to the party. So not everybody's affected the same way. But it, it, I'm just curious. It had to be a long answer. It's up to you, but... <clears throat> It would seem to me that whatever the consequences or effects of these jabs have been will not take long to surface. I, and again, the pot boiling over, being overcooked, that from a ground swell type of, at a minimum, uh, you know, people are going to find out because like you said at the top of the show, this stuff is not happening out there. It's happening right here. And I think everybody's getting exposed to it one way or the other. Do you think we'll see um, something like that occurring like this year? It seems to be a very much a year about revelations. Oh, I, it's coming out faster than you can shake a cat at it. It's it literally, you know, all the stories now of those being harmed in different ways. Well, we do know. And this is the conspiratorial side of it, that certain um, of those that have it will be a control group. So it won't affect you. And that's deliberate. But okay. there'll be the others. Other. And this came out initially um, from someone who worked with um, these organizations. I think it was in, in Europe. Um, and she worked for one of the companies. And she said some vials were our controls so that, you know, you're OK. Others have different things in them for different illnesses, if you like, for um, so that are changed for different outcomes. So you're not going to get everyone the same. So, it, you know, it's experimental and they call it experimental. It is experimental because yes. they the outcomes and we're getting, you know, the myocarditis, the pericarditis with, you know, various, you know, um, mind fog and what have you. What has been fascinating to me as a therapist is the number of people that have had it had not a very good outcome from it and still said, but I'm going to get my booster. And I, I, that now that wow. is interesting, almost like if I have the second one, I'm going to be okay kind of feeling. And that, that is a concern. So you'd think, Oh, I've had a bad outcome. I'm done. <clears throat> say well i'm not going to go there but i'm still advised by my doctor to go ahead well if you've had an adverse reaction with any other vaccine any other they will not give you another one they will not any kind of adverse reaction wow. but they're encouraging them they're saying oh no you've got they won't give them exemption you won't get some doctors here give an exemption no matter whether they've had huge adverse reactions to other vaccines or any any on this one they will Is that me or her? Oh, that's her. She popped out. Fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Really is. Hopefully she'll come back. Will not give oh. them. There's only certain oh. doctors. And those doctors have to be very wary and very careful. You know, what? What? 
lost you, I think. Holy so, shit! Excuse me. Oh, I lost you. I think I that was wild, I people. That was it. wild. And look what she was talking about. I mean, we had this happen on the show a lot, but that was crazy. That was wild. I feel like we had some serious galactic family uh, bringing uniformity back to the van with or back to the signal. That was awesome. That's that was that was all the code you need in ten seconds right there. That was amazing. You had to go back and watch that. You had to go back and watch that part. That was uh, at about the 40, 50 minute mark. Oh my god. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um, <clears throat> do you think that? Um, um, and again, I know we're all different. We all have different soul, galactic, human lineages, and so on. You know, um, it, it sure feels like we're getting a lot of help. Uh, do you? And I've heard credible people that have that type of insight talk about a quarter of the population leaving this year and things like that. And I know it's always like a um, a fortune telling or a reading. Everything changes and is subject to change from that moment forward. But do you feel that uh, we're in a state of consciousness where on an individual level there are people that weren't in the control group that got the um, the pharmaceutical um, types of jabs that could, in their own uh, field, in their own body, um, convert, transform, neutralize uh, what's happened to them? Oh, she's not here. <laughs> I think she'll come back. She'll come back. I'm just going to help the situation here. Oh, there we go. You're back oh, again. You, you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Did, <laughs> this is wild. This is great. Leave it to Mary, yeah. Mary's brought her whole team with her. So they keep pushing us through. Do you think that uh, some people will be able to or have been able to neutralize or transform uh, the medicine that's been put in them? I think absolutely. The new ones coming in particularly can, you know, they can transmute. Many of them, they'll have that ability to do that. And there was a study done in California um, in one of the hospitals there with a, a child that was born with AIDS. Um, and they were monitoring this child every year. And they noticed by the time he was six, he no longer had AIDS. And they found a certain, his codons, in, we all have 20 of these particular codons switched on, but he had 24 of these codons switched on, which made them almost immune to everything. And they found 1% of those they tested had these 24 switched on. So whatever they, I mean, the Star family knew this was gonna happen. We incarnated knowing it was gonna happen. So we've come in and it, all that will do is create a whole new way of looking at healing. Mm. So this will bring in new um, ways of healing. New type. Look at the fact that this woman who didn't know anything about ETs yeah. was taken up on the craft and they were able to clear everything. So there'll be all these kinds of things coming in. Um, Whatever we get, whatever the challenge is, we can transmute it. We can change it. We have, we just have to be under the prompt sometimes to be motivated enough yeah. to look at ways to do this. But there will be some that have chosen to leave. Yeah. And the reason they've chosen to leave maybe is to wake their family up in some way. So it, mm. it, some, it might be a sole agreement that I'm going to go because I know this is going to help you create what needs to be created which is a heaven on earth which is what we're all wanting for our our future families to have which is this new world not the one that that you know these elite want but right. the one part of our soul heritage which is where we've all agreed to come in and be part of that so that we can you know clear the decks from all of this um lack of love and and bring in the energies that will create what we incarnated to create yeah do you think that um i don't know if i ever asked you this i probably have we've done so many shows but do you th and now given the, the circumstances they are now 
as the overcooking has occurred, which is related to all the other things that are either been told and misrepresented or been withheld. One of those being what we might say uh, man-made uh, UFOs, um, Agenda 21, uh, a fake alien invasion. Do you think that uh, we might see something like that, something drastic uh, as a last straw effort that, you know, that might not be, um, or that, let's just say that might be more strategically acceptable from the population, from their eyes, as opposed to, let's just say, strong military martial law police action. Do you think we might see um, a fake alien invasion? Well, they may very well, and Vonnebron Brown, of course, Carol Rosen talks about this in saying that was the third protocol, was the false flag with right. alien invasion. And the interesting thing with that, if they chose to go that way, because another way to create fear, isn't it? You know, the Independence Day type scenario is the more people that are integrated with their source and their resonance are go going to know. Right. It's just like a being coming in the room. And I say to them, what do you feel from that? I mean, stop worrying about what they look like. Mm. What do you feel from that um, being or that intelligence? And they will often say, well, I'm not feeling any threat or I'm I'm just feeling love or I'm, we're going to get the same thing from these. We yeah. are not going to incarnate without the tools we need to operate on this planet because that would be uh, ridiculous. It would be pointless. Well so said. Yeah. And what about the other side? We've all had these waves. Uh, we've gotten to the point now, even with this big one, we just uh, are still, I guess, in the tail end of this uh, 20, all the twos. But, you know, it's I've heard more and more people talk about it. I felt it. Um, you know, you get into the middle of a wave and you're going, oh, my God, all this stuff is flying everywhere. But you, there's something inside of you that goes, yeah, but when I get to the other side, that's been the pattern. We get to the other side and all of a sudden there's this this influx of, uh, of, you know, awareness or, or whatever the case may be. But I mean, as that extrapolates out to the collective, uh, some of these people that I find pretty credible talk about massive changes uh, by the end of 2023. Some call it by the summer of 2023. Uh, massive changes in the way that the world runs, including having councils like uh, made up of people like you that are at a regional level uh, that are that are kind of leading the way. Uh, do you see these things happening uh, at a pace that might be that rapid, say, uh, you know, just wholesale changes by the end of next year? I've had enough information from various sources of those what I call really tuned in that, that we are going to see major changes in the next few years and that it, it is a completely different paradigm. Some talk about an event whatever that may be, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure. But whether or not it, you know, um, it's, we feel it's running fast now, but I think it's going to gather pace. Um, and, and that I think needs to happen. At some point we have to get this sorted out mm -hmm. and it can't be a long process. Mm -hmm. So yes, in answer to that, I think that um, really, you know, hang on to your bootstraps the most important thing is to stay centered, I think, um, and trust that you are being, you know, guided and supported and protected for your role on this planet. So if you're meant to be around for it, you will be. So don't stress, chill. <laughs> and yeah. just allow it to Yeah, true, true that. I know you're connected and you're plugged in and, and, and you're really like a vortex, like a, like a, a magnet. Uh, you've been doing this so long. I'm talking about your work with children. I'm talking about your work with just people in general. I've met, like I told you before, I've met four or five people like, oh, Mary Rodwell started this all for me. Um, I know you're connected to uh, those we might call professionals that could not, cannot openly uh, pursue these things. Uh, because of the potential, um, you know, pushback that they might receive uh, that would threaten their job and so on and so on. Um, but having said that, are you picking up or what kinds of changes uh, are, are feel 
uh, are you uh, seeing and observing and experiencing with these types of groups, these folks that are uh, by the uh, matrix standards, uh, professional certified X, Y, Z. Uh, are you seeing any difference in that since we talked? Well, you know, that Ray Hernandez and the new organization is going to be putting out a book with all the scientists' view of how we understand our quantum reality. And that's the real, the next step for science to really come to the party. And it's happening because so many of those that went into these fields as scientists are experiencers. They were drawn there and psychology, the number of psychologists I've met that went into psychology because they were experiencers. Mm. Um, and the same with, you know, I've met doc, um, MDs that went into medicine because they wanted to heal and were experiencers. So you've got this professional um, life that many, many of them have, academics, scientists, et cetera, et cetera, that have been undercover um, of their own multidimensional experiences now and are starting to open up to that, mm. writing stories, you know, writing books. The numbers of books that are coming out with people having experiences now is astronomical. Mm. You know, I've written goodness knows how many forwards for those books and what have you as well. And we're talking about <clears throat> those that relate to being hybrids, those that relate to having um, soul swap or, um, you know, the the whole, what, what, what I'm trying to think of the usual name for them, soul swap is one of Walk-ins. Walk-ins is another one. Um, Threading, and yeah, they that, do. All of that, all yeah. Of that kind of thing is coming out now, and people are acknowledging it, as well as acknowledging there was one gentleman that was relating to being not only human but also operating at the same time as two other um, intelligences, all operating at the same time. So it wasn't like he was, although he was human, he was also operating as as a star seed, uh, two star seeds. One of them, I think, was Pleiadian. Another one was, um, I think, Mantis or something, but operating at the same time. Wow. In present. So, so this was, words, was this same. somebody, was this somebody who was, was uh, operating three physical incarnations at the same time or three different conscious? Three different, um, operating in those other, as star beings, okay. as well as a human, but okay. in other form as well. Okay, so in gotcha. other words, yeah. So the soul, it, it appears, can, and I've been shown that the, the soul is the palm of your, your oversoul is the palm of your hand, but having aspects of you operating in all different realities, some parallel, different timelines or whatever. So it, it seems that our essence or our consciousness doesn't have to be tied into just one incarnation. At the same time, it can actually be in other incarnations, whether it's a parallel universe, a different timeline, different forms or whatever and we tap into that um, and are shown that often through you know our, our dreams or whatever where we are operating in different forms so we haven't yet understood the nature of soul the essence what is consciousness how are we connected to things yeah we haven't yet embraced the multi-dimensional nature of soul if you like in that way that yeah. we can operate as aspects in different in different frequencies and, and, and different forms, even okay. though we can actually move from one form to another on board craft, move our essence into a form on the craft if it is is necessary or useful to us, and then come back to our human form, you know. And they talk about this this ball of light that's the essence, our Merkaba or our light body, moving from one form on the craft which is useful back into their human form so yeah. this is now what we have to explore is what is the nature of soul what is possible as an essence or a consciousness from source what can we do or yes. what can we be in multiple forms at the same what we say at the same time because no such thing as time anyway right yeah what a what a opportunity so full of potential and unknown and you know it's massive are, are so are you saying that there 
is more coming out about light body experiences, what people might call light body experiences? Yeah, there are many that are relating. We see these orbs around us, we yeah. take pictures of them. Some people see them physically, some aren't, you know, we'll see them, um, you know, through the, the camera lens or, or photos or whatever. These are certainly many of them are different souls and sometimes they can be us. And I remember doing a regression many years ago with a lady who um, her, her boyfriend, she said, was seeing all these orbs around the room, kept him awake and he couldn't wake her up. And he got freaked out because he kept seeing these orbs dashing around the room in the middle of the night. And when she actually woke up, she said she was saying something really weird. It's not what you see, it's what you don't see. And then when I did the regression, she wanted to know what went on, what happened. She was the orb that was keeping him awake. <laughs> that explains <Her>. a lot. <laughs> that explains a lot. And there's been like, you know, there's always been the, these last 10 years, there's always been people, and I'm sure you get it, uh, people send you a message, hey, you were in my dream last night. And, and I know it's accelerated before, but it's been really on uh, this year, like these last few weeks. Uh, I had a friend uh, reach out to me the other night and uh, tell me, I got to tell you, you know, you've been in my dreams for the last seven nights and we're pretty tight. I mean, we don't communicate a lot, but you know how that is, the soul connections. And, uh, and starts telling me about the last one. And I didn't have time in the moment to tell them that I'd experienced virtually the same thing. Uh, a specific message had been written and, and shown in writing and the same thing had happened to me. So uh, there's, and it feels too, to me, like, like even uh, last night, I, mean, I woke up this morning, it took me literally an hour to get out of bed. Uh, it was that much of a, you know, uh, I guess a fatigue or a, a, a taxing on my body, whatever was going on the previous 10 hours in dream state, but I just knew that massive stuff came into alignment. I don't mean about myself. I'm talking about the entire thing that we were congregating, that we were healing, that we were aligning and like just almost like a party atmosphere. But yeah, so I wonder if those types of things, as with the past memories and the mission oriented messages come into play. I wonder if these more recent or say dream state experiences uh, that we're having together in collaboration are going to be coming into our full conscious memory as well. Well, I think that is part of the activation of our awareness and the DNA is that we're going to become more and more conscious of what wasn't conscious before. Mm. Just like for me, I've never had a dream within a dream where I'm actually interpreting it in the dream, in the yeah. dream, um, that kind of thing. That seems to be, you know, and I'm sure there are many people that are doing a lot more of that consciously with their astral traveling um, and remote. All this, all of this is expansion of consciousness. <clears throat> and we're just beginning to get a sense of that. And I've always likened it to a bit to the film, um, uh, that Lucy, where, oh, and yeah. I know some of you may know, Lucy, where the more and more she becomes um, the chemical act, act this DNA activator, for want of a better word. Um, and what she does is become more and more light and more and more multi dimensional in her awareness, till in fact she just becomes light. But I feel that this is showing us quite clearly that as we become activated, more and more we will be able to connect into this unity consciousness so that yeah. we will connect to animals the way the children have told me that they can communicate with animals. Some communicate with plants. Some are talking about communicating even with crystals and, and what have you. What it means is that we are ultimately all made of the same frequency, different frequencies, just we're all made of the same stuff. It just means that we can go to that frequency that that particular object, animal, plant, or whatever it is, and connect to them. I mean, the shaman does that with animals, and we know about that. They'll go into the consciousness of an owl or, they'll, uh, or whatever. But this, this will be everything that we will be able to expand into everything. And that's how I see this activation happening. That's why when a child says to me, he's a center seed, 
going to connect to the center of the planet. He is going to deal with the pollution on this planet. He knows he is able to transmute whatever it is that isn't in harmony with the planet. And he's able to do something with it. This is a 10 year old explaining that, you know, wow. I've had children explain that they can see interdimensionally. When I had a, a seven year old explain how he got to other planets in other dimensions. And he said he uses the runes as a portal. And he said, I just need to know their mathematical number and frequency. And then wow. I can the portal to that particular planet. He just needs to know the number, the frequency to do it. I mean, this is just an indicator of what mm. is available to all of us. This is, you know, the kids are just more awake with it. They're, you know, they're able to um, that process it that little bit more, but we are all being activated to that level as well. It's not just the kids. We're slowly, yeah. as we open to it and we accept it, part of the problem is that we struggle to believe it. That's and what I was going to say. Uh, that's what I was going to or ask you. Like, <clears throat> it just seems like there's been so much focus over the last 10 years, shadow work, zero pointing, you know, integrating polarities, accepting that there's not evil, uh, dark and light. I mean, and again, I don't want to get too caught up in all this because, uh, uh, you know, give me give me some latitude, people. <laughs> but um, like it, there, there just seems to, you know, like as the days go by, the level of impact that our belief systems have on our experience is is really just so much bigger than we thought. And I'm, I'm talking about <clears throat> prejudices, biases, uh, taking things personal, uh, even our own, uh, you know, our own involvement or um, absorption in the things that we do, the things that we think are important. I mean, it's like all of this stuff seems to be getting louder and louder and louder so it can kind of fall away. <clears throat> and, and, you know, it's, it's extraordinary to hear some of these stories, and I just, I just, I know that it's got to be happening everywhere, like all over the place, like China, India, and and it's just, it's just fascinating to 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 me to go. Okay, if this is happening on an individual level on a wider wider scale, it's got to show up, and maybe that's what it's doing now. Maybe that's what it's doing. I, I think it is. When people say, "Well, why is it some people?" <clears throat> I say, well, it isn't like that. It isn't that they're better or more enlightened or whatever. I said, this is the whole planet evolving. Mm. And it's on the planet is evolving. It just is whether the soul chooses to expand or stay as it is, yeah. as, as part of their choice this time round. They may choose to stay limited for their experience this time because it suits their soul agenda to right. be limited. Whereas someone else is saying, no, I've done that now. I want to expand into that higher frequency or that higher consciousness now. And it is, you know, that's why it's all so different. We all have different soul agendas, yes. you know, and it's like, I want to be limited. I want to know what it's like not to know, because that way there's an integrity to the experience. Because if you understood what you were already, what you were experiencing without experiencing it and just intellectually it's not the same you have to feel it you have to be limited to experience it totally um right. as, as you know it's i used to make the, the joke when i was a midwife you know think i thought i was a pretty good midwife and i realized that until i actually got into labor and had my own baby <laughs> i hadn't got a clue um, and i i said every midwife has have a baby before she starts delivering them because you have to experience it you really do. Um, and, you know, intellectually, you can get a sense and you can be a good empath and, and, and connect mm. to that. And some empaths can do that. But primarily an experience to have integrity is where you are in it yeah. so that you then understand it from every level. And that's what some in 3D want to do. They want to be in that limited awareness because it's teaching them a great deal from that actual experience. So that's, everything is perfect yes. for that soul. It's like when I do um, healing with someone and they, you know, sometimes we remove blocks or um, implants or 
programs that they feel are limiting them or whatever and we will explore what they are what what this block is saying to them and what have you and sometimes when i'll say well is it time now to release that block and they will say they're saying no and i said why because it's still serving me <clears throat> it's still so it's the same way when someone has a healing and it isn't what they expect they may you know have a sore arm or you know something wrong with their abdomen or whatever and it doesn't go after the healing and they're saying well why didn't it get healed and it's because sometimes it's still teaching them something it's right. still showing them something oh when it's time but what may happen with that healing is it gives them more more support emotionally or psychologically to deal with it so the healing will be what can we bring in to help that person cope with that because of the pain or whatever until it's time for the soul to relinquish it because everything we have i believe is teaching us something whether right. it is about you know passion for ourselves or love for ourselves or or um knowing that we are um that we have a healer self all these kinds of things through that process of that illness we gain and, and it brings me to a, 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 a really good story of a woman um who wrote a book about her child it's called a child and the child was autistic and didn't speak and the mother um was raising her thinking she was really perhaps intellectually impaired mm. through the book she's been shown a new way to communicate with her autistic daughter through um the computer and she starts to realize <clears throat> can communicate through the computer beautifully and this child she thought was intellectually impaired is suddenly showing her how intelligent she is she's starting to get information on all these different things then she says to mom your guide needs to talk to you mom because you're not listening your guide sebastian she goes so she names the guide telling the mother she's now got to open up to sebastian when the mother is up to Sebastian the daughter says I'm Sebastian so glad you're now communicating with but she does what she says is I chose to be like this in other words autistic unable to communicate normally and the mother said well why would you choose to she said how did you choose to do that she said I limited nutrients in my um in the womb so I would be born autistic wow. but why would you do that said why would you do that because i wanted to go within and this forced me to go within and find new understanding new awareness new powers um all of these things i gained by going within and if i had been born normally i wouldn't have done that so here is a child you know an autistic child explaining to a mum the soul journey and why she chose to create that scenario for herself and it's called a child of destiny i've forgotten the, wow. the um a child of destiny that was yeah a child of destiny and this is what you know, there's a lot more to that i've encapsulated it but to show you it wasn't just one level here it was all about the soul choosing that's right to limit awareness that's right um yeah i mean it, and it gives you a different insight into the choices we've made because i mean really when you get right down to it, it we 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 programmed it we planned it uh, the traumas that we've had i mean there's such a, a lot to be said for all of our journeys in trying to distance ourselves from what we believe our traumas did to us or made us uh, but that's actually you know the goal that's that was the impetus the catalyst for the gold for the you know for the for the seeking that's where we find it and and i and i love what you're saying too because you know my understanding be it this human lineage or soul lineage or both which i want i want to kind of ask you something in a minute about that um it's you know it's it's su it's such a lift to to be able to as they say in human language put yourself in someone else's shoes like, like, do you really put yourself in someone else's shoes? Like, I know so many of these 
uh, incredible modalities and, and processes have been out there, but it's so much of it, like you, I'm, I try to be simple because I can't really deal with a lot of overcomplications, but it's it seems very uh, human and very mundane. But to actually, it, with no BS, actually put yourself in someone else's shoes, you can learn a lot. And if we can connect to essences and aspects and other consciousnesses, why can't we connect to and see from the eyes of that which is us anyway? You know, I mean, it, it just feels kind of mundane and dwarfed compared to a lot of these fantastical stories and experiences and divine episodes people have. But it, it just feels like it's coming down to that, that rawness of the human uh, and really responsibility. Uh, why not? Like you said, we have to have our back to the wall. Well, I don't know. I, I want to experience more ease and grace. Uh, although I do, uh, I do understand the value more and more every day of channeling any and all emotions to the one thing that they actually all are, right? Like I, I don't know. That's that's the creative trajectory that I'm on, or chasing creativity, or chasing new birthing. But um, yeah, this this. Uh, story about this this girl and even like what you said about people uh, and I know you mean it in the nicest way the 3d but I've actually watched people go I, I guess you could describe it as go back to 3d like in and, and I've come to understand that what you said is true this is what their soul wants this is what their soul wants and them receiving guidance from their soul is no different than us receiving guidance telling us to do some of the crazy stuff we've done. It's no different. It's actually somebody tuning in to what their soul wants and surrendering to it and then going for that experience. Yeah. Well, to me, that that the the whole soul journey came as, you know, the information where I was doing past lives and I would take somebody through the death um, deliberately take them through the death where they're seeing that body, you know, whatever male or female. And I would ask then the soul aspect. Okay. So what did you learn in that life? And they may say, well, I learned about limits or I learned about compassion or I learned about this and that, but I didn't do so well with this aspect or that aspect or whatever. Mm. Um, so it was a reappraisal of what they gained and, you know, what they were happy with. And then talking about, their next life and who they would choose as parents, um, who they would choose as siblings to teach them things, not to make it all run nice and smoothly, but I need this to show me about that or this to help me understand this or I need this challenge um, or whatever. And when somebody says to me, so where is the free will in that? The free will is your attitude to it. When mm. you want to see it as a victim, or do you want to see it as a, as a way of growing, learning, and expanding through wow. that, that challenge? There's the choice. That's a that's a mic drop. I've never heard that. Free will is your attitude towards it. That's yeah. there's a lot to be said for that because really that regulates whether it's ease and grace or pain and suffering. <laughs> you know, to think about it, perspective uh, formulates the experience of the consciousness. Wow, that's wild. Uh, we had a uh, we had a uh, a little uh, session the other night. Morgan and I and two friends of ours. And I, I always am sensitive to the inner earth, and it had been picking up. So anyway, long story short, we ended up going to the inner earth, uh, which was really uh, the foundational infrastructure, let's say, of the new earth of the new grid. And it was interesting because uh, in my experience, and they, they had experience as well, of merging with aspects from that, from that dimension. Each one of us ended up happening for each one of us in a different way, but that's, that was one of the things that came out of it. And, uh, and in this connection that, that lasted another two, three days for me, uh, this aspect was telling me that you know, you have a human lineage, you have a soul lineage, that this was kind of the the um, origination of my human lineage, let's put it that way. And kind of like just explaining some things, almost like a bridge. 
Uh, but again, it brought back the, I guess, the memory, the code, uh, you know, the enhancement or, or magnification of some type of connection to that uh, inner earth dimension or frequency or whatever. Uh, or do you get people talking about inner earth and or do you do you are you getting people that are talking about let's say over the last six months a certain type of story or a certain type of encounter that's becoming more prevalent anything like that like where experiences are are starting to match up more or, or carry a certain type of message or intel well in terms of the inner earth that you were mentioning um, some of the most amazing artwork that I've seen of his experiences on the inner earth is Lloyd Canning, the one who did the cover of my book. He's okay. done some wonderful I remember saying to him, this is your experience, isn't it? And he laughed and said, yeah, but he, says he doesn't <laughs> tell everybody that. Um, but they were images of the inner earth and what have you. What seems to be coming out more and more is people wanting to know their mission. Uh, okay. Their biggest issue is like, I need to know now what I'm meant to do. I feel this urge and urgency to know what it is that I have to do. That seems to be one of the major points of uh, that people want to explore. Um, even though many of them are on the mission, there's, it's like there needs to be something else that's activated for them to okay. understand what that is. And it's almost like they're in a holding place, you know, like you know, the eye of the storm, really waiting for that extra information to guide them into the next part of their um, human journey or whatever. And that seems to be one of the major themes at the moment, is that what else do I need to do to be prepared? I need to be prepared for this and what have you. And of course, the children are such an open book with it. They're, you know, they're also acting as a kind of catalyst as well because the kids are coming out with what they can do, what they're aware of. I mean, there are children that talk about, you know, being able to uh, um, influence the elements, for example. Wow. You know, like the wind and you know, um, all the different elements, they say they can influence them, for example. So you've got these kids already operating multi-dimensional. Those that are working, even doing clearing, um, the, uh, the nine-year-old that some years ago told me that he was taught by, by having to clear lower entities that he, he was taught how to do that at nine years old. And he says, I now go out of body and I do this for other children that are being attacked. I wow. will actually do those entities and clear them. And all of nine was very aware that that's what he could do. They're doing some incredible things multidimensionally, you know, <laughs> including being creator beings and talking. Yeah about what they've done in the past as creator beings as well. So we've got this huge number of avatars coming in that are really helping to provide the extra support for the activated older generations that are, have got the programs. One of the things that I think is important to mention here with all of this, Todd, is that you know those that are downloading a lot of information information and some of it they say they can't uh, uh, unpack they say i got the stuff that i'm getting and i don't know what it means i don't know how to unpack it or whatever my sense with that is is when we get fully activated we're going to need new software for the um, new computer human in wow. other words to operate we're going to need a new way of a new uh, modem if you like or mm. to enable us to know how to manage our multidimensional self when we expand because at the moment it would just blow our minds you know yeah. be, i can't deal with all of this i can't yeah that makes this. sense that makes sense given uh enough people expressing uh the challenge of getting used to what's happening how we process you know how we experience like we know we're kind of going back to a more natural state i guess uh but it's unnatural <laughs> it feels unnatural. So that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I know um, uh, I know we haven't spoken in uh, probably four or five months, but uh, and I remember 
seeing you put something out, I think shortly after we talked, where you, a couple of different posts, I think, where you actually were talking about your own experiences. And, and I think you had even made reference that I hadn't done much of this. Um, uh, and I'm pretty sure that that was semi-accurate. But I, I just got to ask you this because these things happen and I've just learned to respect them and just go with it. <laughs> right. But do you I mean, and I have no idea what your experiences are, but uh, do you have a do you see like light, uh, light, white light beings with um, like definition to their face, like in other words, profile to their face? Do you have do you have like a team that shows itself or even in the third eye? Uh, and if so, are they? are white light beings? I know that's a crazy question. Um, well, I get visited by different uh, members of the galactic community, although okay. I have my own, which some come and go, depending on what I'm learning or what I need to learn, they'll come in. Obviously, I have my life guide or gatekeeper, as I call him, who's been with me many, many lifetimes and whatever and provides that kind of support. But what does happen is um, I am shown my third, my screen, <laughs> it's not here, it's over here. Um, it's always this side of me and it's oh. a screen and they will show me who's around. If I say, well, who is that? Some of them are ascended. They call themselves, you know, also some of them are angelic. Some of them are light beings. There's many other different forms if I want to, them to identify themselves or whatever. Okay. So there's, you know, so I don't have any, um, I get the team, but the team, as I say, is some of them are there permanently, but some of them are come, come and go. So if I get new information coming in, I will then question that and say, right, well, show me in some other way that this has integrity. Why are you giving it to me? What is important about it? What am I supposed to do with it? And what have you. So I'm, I, you know, that's very important to me is to question everything that I get. So it can come from various sources. And sometimes it will come from my um, higher self. So it yeah. just comes straight through. And, and that's the other aspect of me. In a way, it's not so much important to identify forms so much. Right. As the quality of information. Right. That's what that's matters. Yeah, that's, I mean, then it sounds like you've, you've uh, uh, gotten to this point after a lot of experience and I guess maybe even trial and error. I mean, you've developed this process over a period of time. I don't, I mean, in other words, the first time that the screen popped up, I, I don't know if you were as comfortable and confident as you are right now, right? You know what I mean? I mean, there was a, pro was there a process that you had to go through to get comfortable with it well very early on i did a training for three years with a group so we did everything mm. name it we did it healing right through channeling to overshadowing and the first time the overshadowing happened it freaked me out because i was still on the the side of mary isn't too intuitive everyone else is going to be great but mary's far too normal so it was like that was my programming, you know, that it wouldn't happen to me, even though it would happen to everybody else. And when things happened, I still had a very uh, good left brain side of me saying, hold on a minute, that could be me, that could be my imagination. When the screen first came up, I had an experience where we were doing psychometry and what we were doing was holding an object and you know you're, most of your viewers will know what psychometry is you hold something belonging to somebody else and you'll get information from it, it just right. will come in right and the very first time i'd ever done psychometry so um i remember them going around the room and they uh, holding this necklace that belonged to the lady opposite and i'm thinking nothing's going to happen i'm not going to get any information that was <laughs> that was my conscious self as I was holding it, the screen popped up and wow. I was seeing a wedding. So I was describing the wedding. The next thing I'm aware of, and this freaked me out, is I'm over here. My consciousness is here. 
the physical body was here and the physical body there was a voice coming out saying to the lady opposite you know I've never left you I will always be with you it was her husband who passed on I'm over here getting freaked out thinking what's going on um anyway to cut a long story short um the conversation happened I'm over here still wondering what what on earth's going on I'm back in my body at the end of it and I remember my teacher saying have you done this before and I went <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the uh <laughs> And I remember the next week going into the group and saying to my team, no overshadowing. I just want the telephone link. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's funny. But it does happen occasionally where it won't just be the telephone link. It will be embodied. Yeah. And yeah. A little bit. And the language is different. The language, the way you say things will be quite different. Yeah. But it's not unconscious. I'm not in deep trance like Bashar at all. Most yeah, of yeah. it is, is telephone link. So I'll yeah. just ask a question and I'll get it. But I don't need to be in trance for that. I will get yeah. that at any time. I can be giving a talk and they'll just come in and yeah. nobody will know the difference. You know, yeah, that's, and I think that's, and this is great information because, you know, I mean, like I, I, re, I remember meeting a, a guy uh, a couple of years ago at an event and he just happened to be coming with some people that I think were more open. Anyway, he was telling me how he didn't believe any of this stuff, and he went to a uh, some type of seminar or something, and they did that psychometry, and that that's what opened him up. He just grabbed some woman's locket, and the next thing you know, and he said, "My God, I've been chasing it ever since." But the other reason I think that <clears throat> it's good to hear what your what Mary Rodwell's experience is because of you know because of the the, the wealth of experience you have is uh, that it's not trance state. Not that it doesn't have to be that way. It can't be that way. But so many of us, I think, and you said it perfectly a minute ago, as you were talking about your own journey, how you you go, that could be me. You know, that could be my imagination. Like, I think there's a lot of us in that space from time to time where we, we you know, but but uh, uh, I think there's some traction occurring. And I think probably because of the shared experiences and the code and, and so many of the changes that we're having. Yeah, it's... It's always a pleasure and an honor uh, to share space with you. I have so much respect for you, and, and so many people that I run into do. Uh, I could just never say enough about it, but I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, um, thank you so much for spending an hour and a half with us and being so open as always and so real, you know, so human. And, uh, and I just wish you the best always, and I look forward to getting together with you again. I hope it's not four or five months this time, maybe just a couple of months. God, an absolute pleasure as always. It's really wonderful staying, sharing time with you. And also I want to thank you for you and your gorgeous um, wife as well for doing such wonderful work because I know you are making such a difference on this planet. Mm. So thank you. Very welcome. Very welcome. You have a beautiful day and uh, keep on charging up the hill as I know you will. Bye-bye. <laughs>